The Grow My Cleaning Company podcast helps owners of cleaning companies just like you to grow your company and yourself so you can make more money and finally get the time and money freedom that probably got you into this business. Discover how to automate and create systems that allow you to grow like crazy without losing control. If you dig the show and want to show some love, subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes. It really helps. Enjoy the show. Hey, Cleaning Nation, Mike Campion here with Jared and his, um, I don't know what you'd call it for those of you on YouTube, his little string that opens and closes his blind. It looks like he's in a prison <laughs> with just that string. That's all he has. Like he, I think he pulls it and the guards bring him food. And by guards, I mean wife and children, I'm guessing. That's how I flush my toilet. I'm just on the toilet. Well, this <laughs> done. Classing it up uh, as is. usually we wait, you know, for the toilet humor to be at least six minutes in, but yeah. well done. We're, we're, we're in less than two minutes in and we've we let everyone know what kind of what kind of party this is going to be. So um, if if and when we get over Jared's hostage uh, slash toilet situation, <laughs> Jared had a good idea of talking about CRMs. I think we get some questions about that, a lot of confusions, and a lot of this dull feeling of, yeah, it's just one more thing I know I should do or have or be, but I don't. And it just makes me feel bad about myself. So let's first define and see if we can't simplify and then kind of maybe break it down into parts that people can digest fairly easily. So CRM contact uh, relationship manager, which is such a fancy word for just a database to store your prospects and customers. Is that a fair working definition, Jared? Yeah. Okay. So I think the two big problems people have with CRMs, the three big problems are one, they think they're super expensive. Two, and they're not, many are free. Uh, two, they're hard to figure out. Like, just so if you guys are wondering, how old is Mike? My CRM, I remember acting gold mine, and it was wildly hard to figure out. It was a big pain in the neck and it was awful. Um, now, I don't believe that's the case. And then three, which is probably the crux of it all, and I'll, I'll let Jared jump in, is even if I did pay for it, even if I did figure it out, I don't really, what, did, what now what? I don't really understand what to do or why to do it. I just, again, feel bad that I'm not doing whatever it is I should be doing. So that's the table I'm going to lay. Jared, you bring in some brains. I will crack wise. Cool. So yeah, the CRM is takes over or is really beneficial for you kind of between the, hey, I just got a lead and I'm closing a lead. CRMs can be great for that stage. And then I've now closed my lead and I want to continue a relationship or continue to, um, keep that person as long as I can. And also someone fell off at a certain point, somewhere between contact all the way to we've been customers with each other, they have fallen off. And I want to be able to continue to reach to that person. If you don't have something that can do it for you in an automated way, then it's all on you. And, and as someone, I have four kids. And as someone who has four kids, I forget a lot of things in my life. I have left kids at the park. I have forgotten shoes. I have come, shown up to places without my wallet. Because I am juggling so much and it's all on me to remember, oh, this kid needed this, this needed this, need this needed this. And if you're doing the same thing with your customers or your current clients of like, oh, this person has been with me for six months, or I had this person who was a lead and I haven't called them or they didn't show up to my appointment. What am I supposed to do now? Should I send them an email that reminds them? If we're doing that, the chances of you dropping the ball or having stuff fall through the cracks becomes high and a big part of your job get sucked into this kind of customer relationship management of you trying to do this manually. And so there is a way that you can have the bare minimums taken care of that you can remove that section off of your plate and have stuff that's automated that's taking place so that you can focus on other avenues of, of your business. So let me give two encouragements. One, first of all, I, I, I agree with everything Jared said. I think the picture of a man with four kids at park trying to manage shoes and socks and kids and seat belts. And yeah, who's got the peanut allergy? I don't know. Peanut butter right. for, for everybody. Right. Just, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just, hopefully nobody in this car. Cause this isn't happening to people. <laughs> um, we'll, we'll know in about an hour for sure. Right. Yeah. Um, so couldn't agree more. And I think that's a, an excellent picture that many of us as business owners can relate to that said, I think Jared actually even almost put it too nicely. Like, oh, we drop some balls or we forget or we don't do as good of a job. I think what happens is we just don't do any of it. Like we get overwhelmed and just shut down. And it's not that it doesn't get done as well as it could, it just doesn't get done. Um, because unfortunately, there's two kinds of problems that come up in business. Those that raise their hand and say, I'm a problem, pay attention to me. Um, customer complaint, ad review, employee leaving, 
COVID, you know, just stuff that gets in your face. Um, and we do a pretty good job of, you know, like dealing with that. But the things that don't, you know, like Jared in his car, I can picture him going, raise your hand if you're not here. Like, well, that's not super helpful, right? So the things that are passively forgotten, if they don't, they're not on fire naturally, we forget. So I would just say, I, I don't even think it's we're doing a poor job at it. We just, we don't even know what we don't know. So we're like, what's the cost? I don't even know. We don't even know what we don't know. The good news is, and this is what I want to encourage you on, because I, we've coached enough to know that people are going to go, all right, I'm going to get my craft together. It's almost like our clients with cleaning, right? I'm going to clean everything out. I'm going to get it all done. Me and the kids, we're going to spend all day. And then 17 minutes in, we're exhausted and hate and want to just give up and hurt somebody. Same thing with that. Well, I'm going to get a CRM. I'm going to have a 27 sequence follow-up, but it's going to be amazing. And it's going to be copyrighted. And I'm going to blah, blah, blah. And then that just never happens. So walk us through what would be a quick way to, like you said, it's not perfect. Maybe, maybe we don't have the right kids in the car, but we came with four. We have four, you know, they're at least <laughs> as good looking as the kids we had when we started. Like uh -huh. <laughs> what's a quick and easy down and dirty. Like I can get started and get a win and feel some confidence. Um, that's not, that'll kind of inculcate or inoculate people away from this spring cleaning. I got to do everything all at once and then kind yep. of the whole thing implodes. Yeah. I think one of the easiest ways to get your foot in the door is to have some sort of um, platform that can send out emails and tag contacts. What that allows for you to be able to have, for example, if I was to say to you, Hey, can you send me a list of all your paying customers and you got two minutes? How many of you could send me a list in two minutes of your paying customers? Probably not a whole lot. Hopefully you can. Um, when you have a CRM that can tag or an email uh, software that can tag, you can essentially go into that and say, go to your tag that's called paying customers. And there they are. And so when you have a message that needs to be projected to your paying customers, you can easily have that message. Now, if we just think about why this could be really powerful for you is like, what if we also had tags for people who used to give us money and no longer give us money? And we come up with something that's different. We have a different offer, something that we feel like has made our service better. Those people are your best leads that you currently have. People who've handed you money before are your best. And so to be able to pull up a list of those people within minutes and have a message in front of those people can be <laughs> amazing for your business. Go even further. What if somebody has left, is giving you lead information, has filled out a form or has contacted you in some way, and never converted. Where are those people? How can we talk to those people today? Now, the answer is they should be tagged within something that you can then pull those people out. And so for me, the, only, the best way I feel like to start is to have some sort of email software, because you're going to need to be sending out emails in anyway, is to have something that can tag. So like a, something as simple as a MailChimp to a, an Aweber, um, we use internally um, Entreport or our clients, a lot of our clients use Pipeline Pro that just is allow you to tag certain people. So as they come into your life, you communicate with that person and you give them a label and you do this naturally as a human in, in general, you meet someone and you're like, oh, that's Mike. He's the guy with the flat top or whatever. Boom, done. Jared, Jared's the guy, the homeless guy. Boom, we've labeled them. And so you're essentially labeling people of like, hey, this is who they are. This is who they are in my life. And then as you're in business long enough, that list is just going to naturally grow. And you've naturally created a, a endless, not, I shouldn't say endless, but a large list of people who can be reached out to at certain points when you are improving your business or have stuff to say or need to be in communication with these people. So a couple of things, you, you made so many good points. I've got like three or four questions I want to ask based mm -hmm. on just what you said. Oh, first quick reminder for everyone. Jared made a really good point. Your, he said your best clients are people that have given you money before and stopped. I would argue best clients are people that are giving you money now and have not stopped, but your second best clients are people <laughs> that um, gave you money before. So always sell yeah. crap to the people you have now. Make their life better is the easiest way. That's neither here nor, here nor there. So two things. One, I was <clears throat> hoping you could go over the difference. Well, the difference between a CRM co contact management system, an autoresponder, um, because I think we kind of use those interchangeably and there's a distinction. And then if you would, so by the way, when you come into our, you know, we only take a dozen or so clients a month at this point. And when you come in, um, this is one of the things we walk through with you. So whether you work with us or somebody else, if the cost for you is to have someone help you, have someone help you. <laughs> this is whether it's a big program like ours or someone just does it, 
pay the price, uh, try and do this on your own. And if you can do it on your own and get it done, God bless, you don't have to pay anyone. But if the two options, if we're being honest with ourselves are, this isn't going to happen, or I got to pay someone to have it happen, pay someone to have it happen, right? Whether they do it for you, do it with you, coach you, get the help that you need. This is, this is an important one. Okay. That said, for the folks that want to go to loan or want to know what kind of chunk we're biting off, what's a reasonable amount of time? Let's say they're not tech smart. They're not tech stupid. They speak the English language. They can answer email, use web browsers, or maybe even Google Docs. And that's about the, the extent of their deal. What kind of time commitment would it take, A, if you'd make the distinction between CRM and autoresponder, B, what kind of time commitment in hours would it take to kind of have just a basic funnel going? So they don't, is this a 300 hour thing, a 10 minute thing, probably somewhere in between? Mm -hmm. Yep. So it's, What's nice about a CRM is that you can do it in sections and feel the benefits of your work. So it's not one of those things where you have to build the entire domino set and then hit the domino and let it all fall down. You can just, you know, it's kind of like more of a house of cards, I guess. You can see the layers being built as it's happening and enjoy the sections as you're building along with what you're doing. So as far as, um, you know, let's, let me go back to your first question here when it comes to like, the difference between a CRM or, or where autoresponders come in when it comes to a CRM. So we just talked about the importance of tagging and tagging a customer. If you want to know the amount of hours it takes to do that, probably one to just say, these are the tags that I have available in my business. And then it's just a matter from there. I would, I tend to just go from that point on, from this point on, let's start tagging. If we have free time, we can go back and tag your customers and stuff like that. Let's tag those people. But Going forward, anyone who's so got let's start from scratch because you're on step three, okay. assuming people already have a CRM or autoresponder. A, they know the difference. B, they have okay. one. C, their customers are already in. So I'm talking about a guy yeah. or gal right now, either cleaning or in his office going, this is one of those things. I know I should have it. I have nothing. I don't know what I should buy. You know, So there's the, the figuring out which one to buy, which okay. we can maybe just give some easy options. There's the getting... Same thing with your PL. We help people do that. And it's like, well, do I get it clean for this month, this year, since the beginning of time? Those are all wildly different. And there's kind of a diminishing return on that, right? Getting your PL this month is hugely valuable. Getting it year to date or last couple of months, you know, and then from to the beginning of time, maybe not as much. So how long would you encourage someone to invest? Um, figuring out which one's which, or if you've got a recommendation, like we talk about Pipeline Pro, we'd love that for our clients, but mm -hmm. you know, there's others. Um, how much to find it, how much to sign up, how much to get clients. And obviously if you're 20 years old and you've got a database of 7,400 people, that's gonna be wildly different than if you're, right. or even, yeah. So just bakes on that. And then we can kind of get to the, now that I've got a, a CRM set up and I've got my clients in it, even the setup, what does that even mean? Is there a bunch, other than putting clients in, is that it? How long does that take? Like start from step zero, if you would. Okay. Step zero is finding a CRM. And so for me, it depends on how big your business is. If you're a 2,700 contact, you probably need to go into a real CRM. Pipeline Pro is what we use. HubSpot is a very popular one as well that can just kind of keep track of a lot of information and move a lot of and have a lot of moving pieces that work really well for you. If you're a newer cleaning company or you're um, going to do kind of thing of like, hey, I'm going to start a CRM today and build my CRM as I go, kind of the house of cards technique. Um, an email software is probably the way you want to start because an email software can always integrate into something bigger. And so, so email software would be like MailChimp or AWeber. Uh, exactly. HubSpot, I know, has a free mm -hmm. version. And then Pipeline yeah. Pro, I don't know if they have free or not, but I believe they're a hundred bucks or less a month. They're yeah. Pi Pipeline Pro sells it in sections on what they, on what you need. And so for our clients, we tend to buy the marketing section and the CRM section, and it comes out to be around $97 a month to have funnels and domains and create as many websites as you want, along with all the CRM, the forms, the calendars that are all integrated with what we're doing. Okay, so, so if there's you're looking a quick just the CRM, there's a, there's a cheaper price for that. There's easy. You can start with HubSpot, HubSpot for free, which I think can go all the way up to enterprise level and do a crazy amount of stuff for a lot, right. which is too, ex too crazy and expensive. You can do pipeline. That's somewhere under hundred bucks, depending mm -hmm. on what you want. Both are fairly easy to, and intuitive to use. So there you go. That, that'll save you. Just pick, spend five minutes on each website, sign up for the one that you like, moving on. Yep. So the next section would be once you have it, how, how much work does it take to bring someone in, correct? Or just so, to get it up to speed so it's worth something to me. 
Yep. So I would say the, the first step would be let's import what you currently have into your stuff. So in, to import and to tag probably takes, so I would plan two to three hours of work to get yourself into a spot that the CRM is already starting to work in your first layer of house of cards is already laid out there. And from there, that's when we want, it, it is really becomes kind of a tailored of how much work you're going to put in to um, automate your business. So the, the suggestions that I would start with is to look at as early as you can in your funnel and start to automate some of that process out. And so a great example of this could be like, if someone filled out a form on your website and then they book a call with you, they need, we shouldn't leave them radio silent during that time. And so we should send them out an automated responder during that time. And those automated responders are going to be emails or text messages that you are able to just, that will go out to every person who ever signs up, will get the same emails and text messages based on the time that they send up of reminders and reasons why they want to show up for that appointment that you booked. So yes, on all counts, the only thing I would add to flesh that out or tag onto that is, I think in layers, I would probably do just the same way we, we look at our most valuable, least valuable customers. First, I would try and get, because if they're not tagged, I don't want to just bring in a bunch of people. I guess you could, but I'd rather just bring in customers first and tag them all as customers. So like just import right. my customers, be like, these are customers. Mm -hmm. Then I'd be like bids I gave within the last 90 days. And then I'd be like bids I gave in the last, no, sorry. The, how I do it is exactly the level of value of customers. First would be current customers, customers. then would be um, previous customers. Then would be bids within the last 90 days, then maybe bid within a year. And then if I had time and it was worth it, bids that I gave ever, then I would go people that reached out. Most of you guys aren't going to have that, but if you have a, this now, you will. So last thing, and then we're going to call it funnel. That sounds really scary to people. And a lot of people are like, well, either I don't have one or my funnels on my website is like, sign up for my free newsletter. And truth be told, I have nine people that signed up for that ever in the last seven years. And <laughs> I don't send out the newsletter ever. Right. And I've never yeah. sent out a newsletter, right? Yeah. Or contact now, which I guess I call if I get a chance or whatever. So how do you kind of square that circle of our previous habits and inconsistencies showing up today and rearing its ugly head when we're trying to get ourselves organized? Yep. And so when you have a CRM that properly tags, like I said, that's going to take you a few hours to get something that properly tags. Then what happens is when somebody, so let's just use MailChimp, for example, MailChimp has a form that will integrate onto your website. When somebody fills out that form, that form will tag them in your CRM as a specific person. Someone who filled out this form on my website, for example, as you are doing this, it's going to tag people. And, you, and let's just go what the mo where you should start is that you should be able to, I should be able to say to you, hey, show me a list of your customers within the next two minutes. And you can do that. Show me a list of people who um, reached out to your, for you to do business with in the last month. And you can say, yep, hold on one second. Yep, I had 12 people reach out to me. And here's their emails. And here's their phone numbers. And here's their names. That's what a CRM is going to let you do. And that's where you can, it doesn't seem as scary when it's like, hey, let's get something that can just tag people so we know who they are. And at any point, we can go back and withdraw from that. Then we can start in implementing some bigger picture ideas of like, okay, well, how can we move the peanut to get someone who's maybe contacted us but didn't take the bid? How can we put some stuff in there? And that's when we can start to spice up that CRM. But the basic basics that you probably do need, I would say like it's, it's you need it, is something that's going to tag your contacts so that you have a list of people and the value of who those people are in your business. And what Jared said makes a lot of sense. Cause again, I remember from the old school, it was very complex to set any of this stuff up and there's just a lot of logic and it was really hard. Now it's not. And I think the, the word tag is so easy because it's fun to tag. Like Jared's an employee or team member, you know, Bing. this guy's a customer like, Oh, this guy referred another guy. Now he's a referrer and this is a referee. This guy is a weekly customer. This guy, like it's very intuitive and it kind of makes sense. And I know I'd used to get, well, what if I tag someone we never use it? It's okay. Like, you know, I don't think it's hard or anything to have a tag that you can't use. And it's kind of fun to tag. And especially if you have a drop down of like 10 things this guy or gal could be like prospect, previous customer, current customer. You, yep. you know, if you want to get super fancy, you could be like, uh, like for more for commercial than residential. Um, you know, for residential, it'd be like weekly, every other week. You know, you shouldn't be doing monthly and you definitely shouldn't be doing uh, one time. So if you're going to do one time, just mark it in your CRM as rat poison. But, um, 
for commercial, you might have ABC, right? A might be any client that's worth more than hundred grand a year. B might be more than 50 grand a year. And C might be, you know, your minimum to, you know, under 50 grand or something like that. So just be creative and have fun. And again, if you tag and it's never used, it's like, that's okay. You got stuff. Last question then we got to, got to call it. How do you automate stuff like that getting in? So like, I feel like we do a spring cleaning and it's like, great. Unless the kids are just going to make it a mess again tomorrow. And it's like, well, I, now I've lost interest. How do we kind of automate simply now say it's, we've waved this magic wand. We've got everything they're tagged we've written. And again, don't, you don't have to write a thousand emails, thousand texts, just two or three easy peasy. Don't, don't get nuts. Be nice. You know, write core values based. How do we keep it up and clean? going forward without a bunch of work. How do we keep the CRM going? Yeah. So when new people come in, how do we do it? So we're not like, oh. Yep. And so the best way to do it is that you have anyone who ever gets in contact with your business goes through the same process. Mm -hmm. And so if, yeah, if you want to book a call with me, this is the calendar. And that calendar is tags everyone into your CRM. So whether they become a customer down the road or run off into space with Elon Musk, like we, they're tagged because they all came in through the same spot that they're coming through. So if you have all these different things, you're like, oh, I, this person contacted me here. This person went over here. This person called me. This person did text. Like that's where things can get crazy. So you just redirect everyone to one spot. And then from the one spot, they're tagged and then you're good. And I would also make a criterion of what someone does and doesn't get in. So, right, like if someone calls in the phone and they're commercial and you only do residential, I'm not, I'm not probably going to put that guy or gal in. No. If they call in and they are good because, you know, yes, what Jared said is we want as many coming through one funnel as possible. But the reality is you're going to have direct messages. People might text you, God forbid, don't give them your cell phone. Um, there might be a form on the thing. You know, they might, there's just, there's just lots of ways people can do it. So perfect example of the least controllable would be if you had phones. And, you know, again, if you, if you're doing it yourself, you shouldn't be. Uh, if you are, you certainly can't be adding someone to CRM while you're cleaning or in the field. So maybe you just pay an answering service a couple hundred bucks and you give them the login. And part of what you pay them for is someone comes in and meets this criteria and they got to they gotta go into the CRM. So I would just encourage you to take a couple minutes to set up criterion of how people come into the system when they do and don't get in and then make it reasonable, right? It's unreasonable for you to be like, well, they call my cell phone and I'm driving or doing whatever I'm doing and I have to, I'm going to enter them because that's never going to be the case, right? Make sure they're calling someone who can put it in or you go to VA who checks your inbox, whatever that is for, you know, people that fill out a form or goes through the DMs. And if you've got some work in your DMs, part of their job is to put people that meet a certain criterion in. And again, like Jared said, as often as possible, send through an automated funnel, like you've got to book your calendar and then that's automatic. You can set that up to automatically trigger. All right. I, I feel like we could do this forever. So let me sum it up with a couple action items. Well, anything to add Jared before we wrap it? Yeah, just one more. I know you, we got to end this, but I, just one more thing. So like as, um, as people are being tagged and contacted, what's really nice about this is that at the end of the day, you could say like, how many Google leads did I get this year? And like from to what's November now, you can look at November, you're like, okay, I've gotten 56 Google leads. How many are now buyers? Zero. And you could go, oh, I've spent X amount of dollars in Google and I'm not getting anything. Like that's what this is really going to be helpful for you is like how many people called me versus how many people filled out this calendar. And you'll be able to look at the data and start to make decisions that will help better grow your business. It's funny. That's a very, it's a corollary to exactly what I was going to say to wrap this and put a bow on oh, it. Oh, perfect. Um, it's almost like we, we thought about this. We did, but <laughs> <laughs> almost like we did. So the big thing I want to encourage you guys, my fear and what I see I love this podcast. And I love the, the value it brings. The big downer that I want to share with you guys is there's so many, you know, we've done 900 of these and people hear and be like, oh my God, that's amazing. That's great. That's great. And it is, and all this stuff's important, but <clears throat> what tends to happen is we get excited about that. Hey, we just listen and go, that was fun. And then we listen to the next one and the next one and nothing gets entered. Please don't do that. I mean, you can do that, but then the podcast is worth what you paid, which is nothing. We don't accept sponsorships. This is all free. We love you guys. So A, take action. B, you want to make sure that you put this under an overreaching plan. So don't just be like, I need to get my books clean because everyone says I should. If you don't look at your books periodically, know what they say, and then make decisions based on that, might as well just have dirty books. Who cares, right? As long as you can file your taxes, it doesn't really matter. Um, same with getting this done. If we don't have a tide to the end of, okay, I see how someone came in and what it cost, and I'm actually this fits in with a larger plan, right? So don't just be like, I need a CRM. I'm going to go off in the CRM tangent for a week or two or, or, or forever. Go, my goal for revenue is this. My goal for profits is this. How does the CRM thing fit into that? Um, so that said, if 
go have fun. If you're like, ah, this sounds a lot. I don't know how to do that. That's what we do. Feel free. I'd start with growmycleaningcompany.com, all for free, nothing for sale there that I'm aware of. Um, start with the five steps to transform your business. That's really going to put a box around all this. So you're doing the CRM within an infrastructure that makes more sense. And um, yeah, just make sure you're, you're tying all this stuff to a goal, not just getting work done. All right, Clean Nation, appreciate y'all. See you soon. Well, here we are, the end of the podcast, and you made it. Great job. Uh, I've got a little bonus for you before for sticking through with me, but like I mentioned before, if you got value out of this podcast and you want to show a little love, subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes, Spotify, wherever the heck you're listening to this thing. Share with a friend. Share the love. And as a special thank you for those of you that stuck with me to the end, how about I give you my personal phone number so we can text? It's a great way for me to get to know you, your business, your goals personally. So shoot me a text now, 602-932-6431. 602-932-6431. I am the only one who responds to these texts and I will personally respond to everyone I possibly can as long as uh, this number is manned. I uh, don't know how long we're going to keep this at the end of the podcast, so grab it now. 602-932-6431. Give me a text. Say hey. Can't wait to meet you.